Welcome back to my channel, Beginner Adult Hockey. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about things that you should know as a beginner hockey player. I've done a couple of these videos, but this one I feel like is kind of important because they're kind of random things that you should know before going into it. So number one, I wanted to talk about your hockey equipment. Hockey is not a cheap sport. It is very spendy to get started. And um, even if you buy all used stuff, it's still, you could still be spending $500 to get started in hockey. So I wanted to start by saying, first of all, you don't need anything new. Maybe your helmet, maybe your skates, but you can still find skates at Play It Again. You can buy most everything used. I still have stuff I bought when I very first started that was used then, and I still use it because it's made really, really well. Just know that you don't have to be buying top of the line anything. A $350 stick is not gonna make you better at hockey. A $50 stick is fine to start with. When I started, I had a wood stick and it was like 20 bucks and I played with it for like four years and it was fine. And then I ended up upgrading at some point. You know how amazing that was? Cause it's like, wow, this is so light. So start Start with that when you're getting started and a lot of places especially like beginner you know adult hockey leagues they'll have equipment you can borrow too you want to make sure this is something you want to do before spending all that money all right number two and it also is associated with equipment is make sure your gear fits correctly and i want to tell you a story of me not having gear that fit correctly when i first started when I first started, I didn't know what I was doing. I went to play it again and I bought skates and I thought they fit me because I wear an eight and a half in women and they were eight and a half skates. And I wore them for like two years and my, my feet would go to the side. Like they would flop to the side. I could not stand up straight for the life of me. And I played in them for two years. Felt like they fit. Finally, somebody said, I think your skates don't fit because your feet are flopping to the side. And so I went and I got a fitting and I wear a five and a half which is amazing because I can buy in the junior section now. But just so you know, get get a skate fitting. Go to either your um, local pro shop. What I did, I just went to my local rink and I said, hey, can I just try on skates until I find some that fit me? Totally free and they were very helpful and that's how I did it. So you'll want to make sure that everything fits you, but especially your skates and especially your helmet. Those are going to be the two things that are the most important because they're protecting the two most important parts of you. Number three, and this is something that a lot of people have a hard time with, and I think maybe it has to do with the sport of hockey, but don't be afraid to ask questions. You know, you're new. We've all been new at some point. Some of us were three years old. Some of us were 50 years old. Um, but if you're new, ask questions. You know what? You're out there. People on the bench, either they're in the same place with you or they were in the same place as you a year ago or, you know, 10 years ago or 50 years ago or whatever. But they are here to help you. Nobody's going to make fun of you if you say, hey, what was that? Why, why was that penalty called? Or what was I supposed to do there? Or, you know, what was the strategy there? People love hockey players. I have to tell you that there's a lot of engineers that are hockey players for some weird reason, but they love explaining things. So, and they love to know that they're, they know more about the sport than you. So if you are getting started and you have any questions, just ask anybody because nobody's going to make fun of you. Some people might make fun of you, but it does not matter. Just go in and ask the questions because you're never going to learn otherwise. All right, number four, and this is a quick and simple one. Buy a black and white jersey, not a black and white jersey, a black jersey and a white jersey with a number on the back. It does not need to have your name, although if it has your name, that's fine. You can go find used jerseys, again, at like Play It Again, or you can get cheap ones off like Pure Hockey or um, Hockey Monkey. But if you are showing up to a game, you never know if you'll have to switch colors. Even if you have like a team jersey, you always want to have a black and white jersey with you or a dark and a light jersey. Although I will tell you a story about dark and light. One time I had a light blue jersey that I had as a light jersey and we went out and we were playing a light purple team and they were dark. And so people were very confused because they all thought I was on their team. So black and white is a good bet. Green, red, gray even are bad options or yellow because nobody knows if you're dark or light. So black and white and just keep it with you in your bag all the time. All right, number five, just understand this is just a game. You're an adult, you're a beginner adult, and nobody's making it to the NHL. I know that a lot of beginner adults come out because they watch the NHL, and so they assume it's gonna be the same where it's brutal and there's fighting and there's hitting. 
we're all adults and we all have to go to work on Monday. And so nobody is out here trying to be brutal. Not only that, but our rules are not, do not allow for this. If you hit somebody, first of all, if you punch somebody, you will be kicked out forever. But if you hit somebody really hard, I mean, you could be out for a couple games at least. Know that we're all, we're all here to have fun. Nobody's here to get hurt or to hurt anybody. And if they are, they don't really belong in this sport. And, um, it is just a game. And on that, just know that the refs are out here. And I will tell you because I'm a ref and my boyfriend's also a ref. And there's such a ref shortage right now that most people are out there simply so that you can play. Like nobody's making a ton of money. People like doing it, but for the amount of games that they have, like a lot of people are just like, I don't want to do this anymore, but I have to because they're going to cancel all these games otherwise. These refs are out here doing good stuff for you. Occasionally, you're going to disagree with their calls, but you know what? They're the ones who are, are doing this. And if you want to sign up, I have videos on that too. Um, but just understand that nobody has a bad intent towards you. Nobody's going to call something maliciously. There's a chance like 0.001% of somebody might call something maliciously, but that's not the intent. You know, it's, they're out here to make sure you have a good time and so that you can come out and play. All right, number six, one of the most important parts is figure out what hockey position you like. Um, for me, I am a wing. I will always be a wing. I've kind of tried to learn the other positions, which you really should learn all of them because sometimes you'll be in a tournament. They're like, I really need a defenseman or something. Um, but for me, I like to be a wing and it's the best position for a beginner because you can do the least damage. <laughs> that for me is the most important. A center is going to be out there. They're going to be skating all around and doing like the most important work. And a defenseman obviously is the one who's going to stop the other team from scoring in theory. So if you like to skate backwards and you like to, um, it's, it, I, I think it's less skating, although I'm not quite sure, but you have to be pretty good at skating backwards um, as a defenseman. So for me, a wing, I'm there, I'm supporting my center, I'm doing what I can, I'm supporting my defense, but I can do the least damage. And then the next step, obviously, if you want to be a goalie, that is a whole nother thing. And I, I appreciate anybody who wants to be a goalie. And if that's something you want to do, because it is way more costly in terms of equipment and it's, it's very different, but if that's what you want to do, then good for you. And you should really learn that position. All right. Number seven, and this should be go without saying, but for some reason it doesn't is learn the rules of hockey. This is something that I'm going to try to start doing more and more on this channel is um, to put more rules out here. I never quite felt like I was the right person to teach hockey rules because I'm, I'm somewhat of a beginner myself. However, I do think it's very important for every beginner to know the basic, most important rules of hockey. Things like icing, things like offsides, what are penalties, things, you know, things like that. So um, just learn the rules. And again, it goes back to one of my past thoughts of just ask questions. If you don't understand something, you don't understand why something worked, then that's okay. Ask people, why was that a penalty? Why did he call that? What happened here? Learn the rules of hockey. There are a lot of them, the USA hockey rule books like this thick, but the basic rules of hockey is what you really, really need to know and just go out there and learn those. All right, number eight is learn what everything on the ice is. This kind of goes with the hockey rules, but if you look at like a, a sheet of ice here, there's a lot of dots. There's a lot of circles and lines and all that kind of stuff. Um, learn where you can be and where you can't be and where you need to go. Um, this goes back to knowing your position as well. But, um, you know, you'll want to know offsides is based on this line and icing is based on this line and this line and things like that. So learn what all these things on a sheet of ice means. And um, I'm going to do a story on this and then another video as well. But this is an important part of learning hockey is learning what all this means. All right, number nine, uh, learn how to get on and off the bench. So you'll see that in the NHL, let's say the bench is over here, right? Um, they will um, jump over the bench every single time. Um, you don't need to do this. You need to understand that you're a beginner. You're probably new on your skates, maybe. Um, you don't need to jump over the bench. It's okay to use the door. I've been playing for like five or six years now, and I still use the door most of the time. You will understand um, as you go that different um, rinks are different. Um, I play at a rink right now that has two sheets of ice, and one of them I couldn't jump over if I wanted to because the bench is so high or the walls are so high. But um, 
the boards, the boards are so high. Um, but the other one's like way down here. And so I could step over it if I wanted to, right? Um, but you'll kind of learn where you're playing and how easy it is. I know somebody who's four foot, like four foot nine, and she found a way to jump over the boards. But just know it's totally fine if you don't jump over the boards in the very beginning. But one thing you do want to know about the boards, um, or I'm sorry, the bench getting on and off the bench is a lot of times you'll be at a rink that's going to be on both sides of the blue line. So you do want to understand that when you are, if this is your offensive zone, which usually only happens um, second period, usually you'll be in your defensive zone here for first and third period. You don't want to go out either this door or jump over the boards on this side because it could cause an offside. So just be aware of that. And usually people will remind you um, when you are in that situation, but that is something that you'll definitely want to learn. All right, the next big thing is how to change lines. How do you know when to get on and off the ice? I think when people start playing hockey, they're like, I have no idea how to know when to get on and off the ice. And there are a couple different philosophies of this. You'll find that if you watch the NHL, they know exactly when to get on and off. They either they do it at the whistle or they do it. Um, they just know, right? So I wanted to show you a little bit. So basically, you're going to go out there and you're going to be on lines. And lines mean a couple different things. So you'll, as a as a forward, you'll uh, that marker doesn't work. Um, you'll have first line, second line. Occasionally, you'll have third line if you have 13 people show up. So right. So I'm trying to make this as big as possible. You'll have a left wing center right wing left wing center right wing left wing center right wing defense is totally different you'll have a defense left right defense left right okay so first line second line third line so the two philosophies and i i fall into one bucket however depending on how my team wants to play that's how i try to play but basically um my most important thing that i pay attention to say i'm a left wing I need to know who I'm following. That's the most important thing to me. When they get off the ice, I get on the ice. That to me is like, there's so much to remember that that's the one thing I can remember is who I'm after. However, and this is why I say there's philosophies about this. Some people will get out there and say, you're not allowed to get off until your line gets off. You have to all go on and go off at the exact same time. The reason I don't always agree with this is because sometimes I'm tired. <laughs> you know, like uh, I can't skate anymore. I need to get off the ice right now. Um, so that's that's something that you'll have to remember. And basically, what you should remember is get out there for 45 seconds to 90 seconds, maybe max, and just skate as hard as you can, and then get off. Um, you do also. There's a couple different ways to um, couple different rules on getting off. Like if you're in the defensive zone, the rule is you're not supposed to get off if you're in the defensive zone or if the puck is headed towards your defensive zone you're not supposed to get off because that puts your team at a disadvantage if you're headed towards the offensive zone you should if you're tired and this is one of the hardest things to do because you're like oh we're gonna go down and score and now I have to get off and then half the time my team scores when I do that so um but you're gonna be switching with these people not these people. And so just know that um, you need to just know who you're following. Defense is going to be similar and that left is going to switch with right. And you should you should only be switching when you're headed towards your offensive zone. Yes, I'm not a defenseman, so don't call me on that. Um, but that would make sense. Okay, number 11. I know this is getting very long. Uh, number 11 thing you should know in beginner adult hockey is uh, count to five. Sometimes this is hard for hockey players. <laughs> you would be very surprised. So when you have a face-off or even if you're switching um, your position while the play is going, you need to make sure there's five people on the ice or fewer. Four is better than six because six is going to, you're going to get called on it and it's going to be a penalty. So somebody's going to have to sit in a box. So if you are on a face-off, say it's the very beginning of a, of a period, you have one person here, one person here, one person here, one person here, one person here. Um, for some reason, people get away with six where like there will be another person. I don't know how people don't realize they're not in the right position, but um, learn to count to five because if you go out there and there's six people, it is a penalty. So you just, you need to make sure you'd be surprised how hard it is for some hockey players to count to five. Number 12 is going to be learn about stop time versus run time. Um, stop time is going to be where the clock stops after every single whistle. And so that means an offside, that means the end of a period, that means a um, icing, it means anytime the clock is stopped or anytime play is stopped, the clock is gonna stop. 
And that makes sense, right? A lot of times you'll find stop time shorter periods, usually anywhere from 15 to 18 minutes. Um, versus if you have runtime, and runtime is basically the clock stops at the begin or starts at the beginning of the period, and it does not stop until the end of the period. And a lot of times this will be um, like I play in a league right now that has runtime, and that's because there's no they don't want to pay a scorekeeper, and that's fine, right? But it's a 20 minute period. It's a little bit longer because you're not using all that time to stop. So. Um, there's different there's different reasons why they do that but just know that you'll want to check the clock at the very beginning of any game to see if it's stop time or run time number 13 i've mentioned this a number of times but i cannot overemphasize how important febreze will be in your life and you should get lysol you should wash your equipment i have videos and all that kind of stuff but febreze in between games especially if you have a bunch of them will be absolutely your best friend because um, that hockey smell, which you will start to learn to smell because it has a very particular smell, um, it's pretty much mostly goes away with Febreze. We go through a lot in my house. I think we go through like four or five bottles a month in my house, um, but just understand that Febreze is important. It will keep your marriage together and uh, it's, very important. Definitely invest in some Febreze. Okay, so I kind of touched on this before, but I wanted to talk about how many players you're going to be playing with each week. And so I have this on my website. So I want to just give you kind of the math though of um, when you will want a certain amount of players. It, your game is going to make a huge difference based on how, oh, there's my eraser, based on how many people show up. So like I showed you before, um, if you have Three lines, let's say you have a, I shouldn't have erased that. Okay, left, center, right, left, center, right, left, center, right, and then a four defensemen, right? So this adds up to 10, wait, yeah, 10. Wait, no, I'm sorry, 13. <laughs> talking about doing math. Um, okay, so this is 13 players. For me, I love this. I love 13 players because I love three lines because I get really tired really fast. And if you have two lines, it can be exhausting because you're switching with only one other person. And if you're doing that for 60 minutes, it can get very exhausting. So I like three lines. I know that people who are in slightly better shape than me like two lines, and so that's 10 people. So 10 or 13 is going to be the ideal number to show up for any hockey event because you'll have you'll have equal lines. Sometimes you don't have 10 or 13, and so the problem is, so say you have nine show up, a lot of times they'll take away a center, and then you'll just have your centers switching. Or um, if you have if you have eight it gets really tricky, right? Like sometimes they'll take away like that. There'll be three lines here and then two there. It, it gets very complicated. Eight becomes very exhausting because you just don't have that many people. However, on the other side, if you have say 16 show up, you have four lines and then you're out on the ice maybe once, maybe twice a period. I mean, it's not gonna be a whole lot of ice time. So just know that too many, not enough, both bad, you really want that ideal 10 or 13. I have seen teams that have like 19 show up and then it's like nobody gets any ice time and nobody's having fun, you know? Not only that, but sometimes the fewer amount of people, the better your team kind of plays together. And I've seen really good teams that 18 show up for playoffs and then all of a sudden they're horrible because they just don't know how to play together. So understand that the amount of people who show up is really going to affect how your game finishes that day. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed that. That was a lot of stuff. If you would prefer to read it, I did write a blog post about this, so I'm gonna put that below and you can read it there. But let me know if I missed anything. What kinds of things did you learn as a beginner adult hockey player or what kinds of things would you like to learn? Also, don't forget to subscribe and like below. And also let me know if you have ideas for other videos as well.